Okay, so there are many vibe coding apps out there, but they have a lot of major flaws. In this video, I want to show a tool which is like the anti-vibe coding tool. So this tool comes from JetBrains and they've kindly agreed to sponsor a video going through how this works and some of the best practices you should think about if you're a professional coder looking to use AI to enhance your coding, as opposed to someone who doesn't know how to code and is basically just constantly making things from scratch. So if you are a software engineer, and certainly if you've worked at a big company, you've probably come across JetBrains IDEs. They make IDEs for a whole bunch of different languages and frameworks. As you can see here, probably the biggest one people would know them for would be IntelliJ IDEA, but they also have things like PyCharm, which has been around for many years, and also things like PHP Storm, WebStorm, and RubyMine. So the thing that sets these IDEs apart from generic IDEs that are out there is that they're heavily customized to that specific language and that specific framework. And that combined with the models from Anthropic and models like Gemini 3 allow them to build something that's really unique. And this brings us to Juni, JetBrains' smart coding agent. And the idea here is that this is not a separate product that sort of stands alone. This is something that creates a scaffold to work in any of their IDEs. So Juni goes beyond just being a sort of plugin for the ID. It's fundamentally baked in, not only with that IDE, but with all the special features that IDE has for the particular language or framework that you're working with. So just as their IDEs are set up for the various languages and frameworks in there, Juni is able to be specialized for those particular languages and frameworks as well. So you can think of it as if your project is a Android app and you're working in IntelliJ, the scaffold and the structure of the agent are actually set up for that particular architecture. And in many ways, you could think of this as being almost like a pairs programming partner, that as you're going through the code, you've got this agent in there that knows what you're working on and then is able to work with you in this specialized environment. So one of the key areas where vibe coding really falls apart is when you've already got a code base that you need to work on. So the cool thing with Juni is that a large part of the Juni experience is not just built for starting out from scratch. It's built for going into a code base that you've already got, being able to ask a bunch of questions about it. And then under the hood, it's got its own iterative loop of where you'll plan what you will actually do. It will then actually act and either write some code or optimize code and also write tests to go along with that. And then it basically verifies and refines this. So it's much more you having a conversation with the agent about what you're trying to do structurally in the code than it is just letting the agent go wild and basically make everything. Like many of the other coding agents out there, it has features where you can set up guidelines. It has support for things like MCP. And if you want to, it even has what's called a brave mode where it will go and just write a bunch of code for you. But for me, the real strength of this comes in this code ask mentality, where you're able to take your code base, ask a bunch of questions about it, propose some ideas without writing any code, and then be able to execute that as you go into a coding mode. So for professional developers, this is really set up for much more sort of trust and control over what you're actually creating rather than just letting some agent go off and make everything by itself. Like I've mentioned a number of times, one of the big advantage of this is for team onboarding. So if you have a large code base where you've got a team of people working on this, you're then able to onboard people faster as they can then go into ask mode and get summaries about particular parts of the code base, about how things interact with other things in the code base. And you can even have your whole standards and the whole sort of stack defined. So as people go in to work on the code base, they're able to do queries, they're able to have things explained to them about what's actually going on there. So let's just jump in, have a look at how we can do some of the things in here. Okay, so this is a project that I was working on with Juni. It uses the live API or the Baidai API from Gemini. 
And they had a nice sort of demo already out there, but it wasn't in Next.js and I wanted to convert it to Next.js. I also wanted to add in some features. So basically with buttons, you could have someone just sitting there and then responding to live customer support queries on the telephone, etc. So the first thing that I needed to do was generate some project specific guidelines. And so the idea here is that you just come in here, you let us look at your code. And one of the things that I really like about all of this is that you can kick off just with ask where, okay, this operates very much like I'm talking to someone who knows the code base. They will go through, check out the code base, and then tell me about the code base. What frameworks is it using? Any features that I should be aware about? Any sort of setup stuff that I should be aware about? That kind of thing. And once I've done that, I can then basically generate these project specific guidelines where it will save to a markdown file. And you can think of this as like your agents MD or your sort of rules MD file that you get for coding agents or other agents, etc. Once Juni was done with that, then I was able to just move on to tasks. And this is where I move over to the auto use where it now can basically answer questions, but it can also write code and can move on doing that. I can also select think more. Or if I really wanted to, I can select brave mode, which I'll talk about in a second. So at this point, I basically had it convert everything to Next.js so that it was actually working as a basic Next.js app. And then there were a bunch of tasks that I wanted to do, like update and add some features to it. And this is where we see the nice sort of planning element where it would go off and execute. So once it'd gone through and made those changes, I then wanted to make some changes to how the actual app was laid out and add some new functionality to it. Okay, so there are a lot of really nice sort of quality of life things in here. So I've been talking to it and getting it to run some terminal commands and it can go through that and do that no problem at all. I've got the guideline docs open here. Now you'll see that I've split it. So this is actually a markdown file. So we can see it as raw text above here and down here is markdown, but they're synced. So if I start scrolling the top one down, looking for something, it will actually sync the markdown so that I can see what I'm editing, what's going on, that kind of thing in here. So looking at the app, I can see that I've still got some issues. So I'm going to try out brave mode and see if it can actually fix it. Now I've got the app running live in another window. So let me get Juni to basically run through and try to fix some of the buttons and some of the issues going on here. Now, one of the things that's nice about even with brave mode, it's set up so that if it is going to make certain terminal commands and stuff like that, it will still come back to you and double check if you actually want to do those things or not. You can see as this is chugging along, it's been able to work out where the actual correct file is. It's got a plan up here that it's working to. We can come back and see this plan at any point. And we can see that it's looking for the actual symbols and it's working on what it actually needs to change in here. Okay. And you're just looking over here. It's actually gone through and fixed up the issue, worked out what it was, wired all this up nicely now so that it should work. And it looks like that it was actually a CSS issue that happened in the conversion. And so it sort of worked out that, okay, it just needs to link certain things together to basically get the whole thing working again. I do like at the end of each run, it gives me a very clear breakdown of what has actually changed in here, of where it's added code, of where it's deleted code. We can actually bring up and see, okay, what was actually changed in here. We can also see in this diff view, looking at what things have changed. Obviously we've got a lot of nice things from the editor helping us with colors or things like that. But here we can clearly see what's been changed, what's not being changed very quickly so that we can decide if we want to roll back anything. We can review the entire plan and see what happened. And if at any point in time we wanted to roll back, we could just roll back all of these things. And this is what I think is really the strength of Juni is that it's not about what it changes. It's about you knowing and being in control of what it changes. 
with you being able to clearly see those things, you're then able to commit a Git change to this easily. You can basically tag things. You can push things to new branches, etc. You can even do things like easily generate a change log and track that based on your recent commits in here. Another thing that's really nice is that it will often do things like this. How often do you want me to ask questions? If I come into the settings here, I've got a whole bunch of different settings for Juni including this sort of frequency of questions from Juni. So it definitely has more of a pairs programming kind of feel than using a lot of these tools that just go for it and never come back to you and never ask you anything. Okay, if I wanna set up an NCP server, I can just come in, paste this in here. I'm just gonna put in my API key and then close this. And you can see that once I've added my MCP server, it will show up in here. I can see the status of it. I also have the ability to change the model in here. So if I want to use GPT-5, I can use that, but I can also move over to a Sonnet 4.5 model if I want to do that as well. Okay, so you can see here, I can go off and give it a new task, but this time I'm asking it to use context seven in there. So it will use the MCP tool. It will look at what it has available in there. It will then look at the actual tool. I do really like this whole process of look at the code base, assess where things are, make a plan, talk with me, take action, finish the task, give me a full revision of what's been changed, what hasn't been changed. Okay, it's gone through and run and adhered to its plan. It's worked out what it needed to change. And then at the end, it gives me the nice report. At this point, I can add it all to Git. I can then make a commit. And just like before, we can come in and see what it's actually added in here. So we can see that it's actually now added a bunch of things for this live support console. Hello there, I'm your virtual assistant and I'm here to help. How can I assist you today? Could you please provide your order number so I can check its status for you? Once I have that, I'll be able to give you an estimated delivery or resolution time. And don't worry, if there are any unexpected delays, I'll be sure to keep you updated. Okay, here's a quick summary of our conversation so far. I greeted you and introduced myself as your virtual assistant, offering my help. I asked for your order number. Okay, you can hear from that that Juni has now got this fully converted to Next.js, it's all working as expected. It's been able to add in the new features that I wanted. And now it's at a point where I could go through and just stylize the UI and work on things like that. So just to finish up, I would say one of the cool things about Juni is that it's not trying to measure success by the amount of code that it's writing. It really is much more of a tool and that makes it really not a vibe coding tool, right? Which is great, I think. It actually is measuring much more about trying to make the least changes possible to a repo to get a job done. And this is much more in line with professional software development than it is with things like vibe coding tools that you put in a three word prompt and it goes off and generates something that usually probably doesn't work that well and it's just going to be eye candy. The other thing that I think is really a big win here is that while I've been showing this with WebStorm, which is their sort of JavaScript editor, we could also be doing this with Rust. I could also be doing this with Kotlin or with Java in something like IntelliJ and actually have that working perhaps with something like Android Studio to roll out a full app. Now, I think this is where a lot of developers are really going to like this. With a tool like Juni, if you already know how to code, it can teach you new frameworks, new languages, and help you to be able to ship usable software that can actually be useful and not just chew up a lot of tokens. So if you have ever used the JetBrains IDEs, certainly go and check out what Juni can do for you and try doing some AI coding where the AI coder is actually like a pairs programmer that's sitting down working with you, having a conversation with you, and not just some crazy intern that's trying to write 50,000 lines of code in the first hour. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. There are links to all of this where you can get started in the description and check it out. And as always, I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.